So in this video, I wanted to talk about my experiences using the Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery while camping here in Kujbaquak National Park. If you're interested, keep watching. So this is part two of possibly a three part video series on using my Power Queen battery in different scenarios. In the first video, I talked a lot about the technology that went into this battery. And I also talked about the MPPT solar controller that was sent to me with this battery. And I'm going to show you both in action today and, and how I'm using out here camping. So as I mentioned, Gene and I have been here at Kujbaquak National Park in New Brunswick, Canada for two weeks. Our camping is off grid. We do not have an electrical hookup. So we require a power source like the Power Queen battery for all our electrical needs. Now, primarily that means refrigeration. And I'll show you the connection I have with the refrigerator that I brought with me today and uh, and how we and also how I charge it, of course. And I have solar panels for doing the charging. So that will bring into the picture the MPPT solar controller that Power Queen sent along. So let me just reposition the camera. I'll show you the setup I'm using to power my refrigerator. I'm then going to show you the setup I use for recharging the battery. And then I'll talk about my experiences using them both. The setup for operating my refrigerator is very, very simple. So here is my Power Queen 100 amp hour battery. And uh, I have connected to it a cigarette lighter socket onto the, uh, the terminals and I have plugged into it the cigarette lighter extension or adapter for the refrigerator. Now the refrigerator that I'm using this year is the Iceco APL 55. It's a 55 liter refrigerator that has both freezer and refrigerator components to it. Now I have a separate review of this unit at, on my playlist if you're interested and I'll also be doing a long-term use video of this unit while we're here at Kujabaquak. So if you're interested in learning more about the refrigerator then um, you can look for that video. It'll come out probably very close to the same time I put out this video for the Power Queen units. Now that's all there is. Really that's all there is is to operating the fridge off of the battery. So what I want to do now is take it outside and set it up with my solar panels to talk about how that works. Now just before I go, uh, sharp eyed viewers may notice that the, what the shelter that I'm in, this is the Viver collapsible shelter that I reviewed last year. So if you're interested, yes, I am still using it. This is year two on it and it's still serving us very well. I put links to all of these videos at the end of this one if you're interested. All right, now we'll move over to the solar panel setup. All right, a quick demonstration of the setup I have using my Bluetti 200 watt solar panel with the Power Queen MPPT solar controller and the Power Queen 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So the thing I should mention even before I start is people are saying, well, didn't you just unplug that from your fridge? Yes, I did. And I have a power station that I'm testing that I will be reviewing attached to it now because that's been my experience is you actually need two sources of power if you're going to be off grid. One that's actively being used to run the refrigerator and the other one that you're recharging in the meantime so that you can switch them back and forth. And the other reason of course is the 12 volt battery doesn't have an inverter it, and it has no way of reducing DC voltage for things that we can need to charge like our phones like our uh, headlamps flashlights the camera that type of thing so you do need if you're going to do a setup like this and I'll talk more about it in a couple minutes two different devices of some kind and my primary thinking was the power station is the one I would use mostly I don't mean for the fridge but for all the other things other than the fridge and I would share the load on the fridge between the power station and the battery and it's been very helpful I'll explain why in a few minutes time so basically what I have is again is my 200 watt Blue Eddy solar panel that's the most transportable of the solar power panels that I have my battery and the MPPT controller. Now I want to bring the camera over so that you can see, hopefully I may have to move it into the shade so that you can get a better look at it. Uh, yes, somebody's going to say, you really shouldn't have all that stuff out in the sun. You're right. Look at my cables. I got lots of cables. Normally this would be all in the shade somewhere and only the solar panel would be exposed to the sun so as not to overheat the rest of the system. All right, I'll do exactly that. Put these things in the shade so that I can give you a close up of the MPP controller in action. All right, so I have moved the MPPT maximum power point tracking solar controller into the shade so that you can get a better look at the display and I can go through what this is offering to me in terms of information. Now I'm going to be brutally honest right now. 
I'm not sure that I'm interpreting everything that I'm seeing in the best way. It's not the type of display that I'm used to looking at, certainly not like what comes with most power stations, which are very simple and easy to understand. But I'll do my best to interpret what I'm showing you, and I'll tell you what information I'm going on to say these things. So to start with, this is your base display, the status, and it's showing me the status of the battery at 14.3 volts and it's showing me that the solar panel is in fact passing energy over to the battery. Now for some reason it's also showing energy being passed over to a load but as you can see here I've got nothing attached to this so there is no energy outgoing from this unit. It is only going into the battery itself so I'm not quite sure why it is showing that. Now you can see up here in the right hand corner the solar panel has got a flashing green light so I looked at, uh, through the manual to see what that means and it's saying that solar charging is in boost mode. Now um, there is no definition of what boost is but I can only assume that it means that it's charging the battery. Uh, there are no errors. There's nothing wrong here with the system and I can show you that by showing you where the error code place is. So let me just scroll down through the screens that are here. So it's telling me that the battery is running at 21.2 volts watt hours in now I don't not, not, that's the I'm not sure if that's the watt hours going into the unit it can't be because I know that the battery is in fact charging I'll talk about that in a moment amps boost is 15 again I'm not sure what 15 says the manual does not cover that information to talk about what the boost levels are that's the error code E00 means no errors it's operating normally the unit is operating at 23 degrees Celsius. I'm in the shade and it's a nice day today, much cooler than it was earlier in the week. And right now it's telling me that my battery is at 238 watt hours. That's out of a possible 1250 watt hours. So it's not the percentage that I'm used to seeing, but it is helpful. And I was actually surprised when I did find this that it's nowhere near as charged as I thought it was. And I think I know the reason for that, but we'll talk about that in a moment. And finally running at 4 amps. Now it says 100%. I'm not sure if that's saying 100% boost or 100. It's certainly not 100% charged. So again, it's a little bit difficult to determine what the display is saying. Now, this is the manual that you get with the Power Queen unit, and it has all the setup information, all the error codes that you need, all important things to have. It has an indicator to what the each of the LEDs are for but not how to interpret what is actually happening. So I was a little bit confused by this. It's out of my league of information. I certainly have more to learn about that. Now, the other thing, of course, is that there is an app, and I have downloaded the app, and it's on my phone, and it's connected to the MPP controller now and I do want to point this out there are in fact a couple of different apps for your cell phone that Power Queen offers there are apps for the batteries that are Bluetooth enabled and there are there's an app for the solar controller so this is the one for the solar controller now what I'm thinking I'm seeing is that it's showing me the same thing as the display did here 14.2 volts that's a battery bank status 54 watts charge or 52 watts charge. Now that is a little bit hard to believe considering the fact that I'm using a 200 watt solar panel and it is in full sun at peak time. So if that's all the MPP control T controller is is bringing into the unit um, that, that I'd say that's a little disappointing but that could be a mismatch that's one of the things that I'll comment at the end of this video and yeah so that's basically all that I have that this information has uh, there's a little bit of historical information but nothing that's telling me precisely where my battery status is 14.2 volts that's the battery status to the best of my knowledge the won't see you need to see 14.4 or 14.6 for a lithium iron phosphate battery to be fully charged my best indicator is what I showed you a few minutes ago or a minute ago Let's see if I can come down to it on the screen which is this that's how much power I have in the battery from the solar charging now 242 watt hours 
All right, so that's everything I can show you about the controller. I think we can wrap this video up. Hi folks, this is an alternative ending to one that I recorded while I was in Kujapaquak National Park. I waited until I got home and began reviewing the video segments that I had and did not feel comfortable delivering the video with the information that I had recorded. What I wanted to do was further testing with the battery and the solar controller so that I had a better understanding of what the solar controller was actually actually telling me. Now that it's been about almost two months since I've been to Kujpaquak, I did a number of tests here at home and I got in contact with Power Queen. I have a much better handle on this information. First off, I wanted to tell you that the battery did everything that I hoped it would do for me at Kujpaquak and I have since confirmed that at home doing a number of tests. Let me just quickly tell you what tests I did. To start with, I discharged this battery totally using it to charge up one of my power stations. I actually drained it down to zero where it would not record or recognize or even be recognized by the MPPT solar controller. I then recharged it up using a wall charger to full capacity again. I then discharged it again fully using my ISCO refrigerator until it, again it went down to zero capacity. And again, I charged it back up using the wall charger. I was doing that because I wanted to get an estimation of how much time it ha would take to charge the battery up. And I also wanted to see how much uh, energy it would discharge into my power stations. And it, it did well, it did great. It did exactly what I hoped this battery would do. So I'm extremely happy with the battery and what it is capable of. Now, I still have the cold weather testing to do, I know, and that will come at some point in the near future. Now, the issue that I have is actually with the solar controller. I have no uh, no issue at all, I guess, with the construction of it and how it delivered power from my solar panel to the battery. The issue I have is with the display and the information that it's providing me. So the issue is twofold. First off, as I said in the video, I don't believe that the manual is detailed enough in helping me understand or helping you understand how the solar controller is actually working and what each of the icons and each of the display modes is telling me. Even in the video, I talk about one of the displays showing me that the battery had 100% full charge. And I know that is not true now. Let me explain how I know. So in one of the tests I did where I discharged the battery down to zero, absolutely drained it, I gave it a five minute charge using the wall charger. That is nowhere near enough to give it even 10%, let alone 5% let alone the 53% that the solar controller told me it had in it. It takes a couple of hours to really charge this up from zero. So when I reached out to Power Queen, what they told me was is that the solar controller is doing a calculation based on the reading it gets of the voltage and therefore calculating a rough estimate of the percentage. And admittedly, they say it is not very accurate. So you cannot count on the percentage of the full state of charge that the solar controller indicates for you to know just how much power is in the battery. And I think there's a bit of a miss there. I would like to see Power Queen correct that. So at this point, I think the battery is still an excellent deal. It's still a high quality battery for anybody looking for a battery of this type. The solar controller, I am sure, is delivering the energy from the solar panels to the battery. What it's not doing, though, is giving me a percentage of the battery charge. And that's all important. If you're using your battery, you want to know how much is going in, um, how much charge it has, how much charge is going out, the type of things you would expect and you would receive if you were using pretty much every modern power station on the market today. All right, that's all the information I have, and uh, I'd, I'd open it up to you. If you have any comments or questions regarding either the battery or the solar controller, put them in the comments section below. I'll put the links to both of these products in the video description. I'll also link my initial testing I did with this battery. And as I mentioned before, there is yet another test to do, and that is when it gets really cold to see how well this battery works in cold weather. All right, that's everything I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.